Hello boys and girls. It's great to be with you once again and I hope you had a great week and are ready for this week's little story and lesson. But before we get to that, I just want to say thank you to the boys and girls who made these lovely cards uh, from Vacation Bible School and they are Happy Birthday Holy Church and they all tell me different ways that they and the Holy Spirit can become a daring duo. And so I'm glad that they learned something really special during those times. And I'm actually more grateful, too, to the folks who were able to coordinate this for us so that our children could benefit from this week of Vacation Bible School. And so today our story is called One Green Apple. One Green Apple. And today we're going to hear about a young girl whose name is Farah. And I'll tell you a little bit about Farah before we actually get to the story. Farah feels alone. Even when she's surrounded by her classmates, she listens and nods, but doesn't speak. It's hard being the new kid in school, especially when you're from another country and you don't know the language. That's got to be a big challenge. Then on a field trip to an apple orchard, Farah discovers there are lots of things that sound the same as they did at home, from dogs to crunching their food, to the ripple of friendly laughter. So let's listen to the story of Farah and see what it teaches us about being someone different in a foreign land. So listen very carefully. This is my second day in the new school, in the new country. There are to be no lessons today because we're going somewhere. Other days will not be like this one Tomorrow I will go again to the class where I will learn to speak English. Mothers drive us to the start of an orchard where there is a hay wagon. We climb on and lean against the bundles of hay. The wagon is pulled by a tractor and we jolt along. I think it odd to have boys and girls sit together. It is not like this in my village. The students know each other, but they don't know me and I don't know them. I can't understand them when they speak and I can't speak to them. Some are friendly, but some look at me coldly and smile cruel smiles. I hear my country mentioned, not fondly. I would prefer to go home. My father has explained to me that we are not always liked here. Our home country and our new one have had difficulties, he says. But it will be good for us to be here in time. How much time, I wonder. I am different too in other ways. My jeans and t-shirt look like theirs, but my dupada covers my head and shoulders. I have not seen anyone else wearing a dupada, though all the girls and women in my home country do. It's got to be very difficult leaving one place and going to another that's very different from the one you knew. The girl who sits next, next to me smiles and points to herself. Anna, she says. She points to me, Farah. I nod and say Farah, which is my name. Then I look across the field where cows graze. I am tight inside myself. Three dogs come and run in front of us. I think they belong here and know the way. I once had a dog called Hadis. When Farah says she's tight inside of herself, I think she means she's very nervous and she feels unsettled and uncertain. Have you ever felt that way? It's not a comfortable way to feel. But let's see what happens. We stop at a place where apple trees bunch together. I find out we are to pick the fruit. Old apples have fallen in the grass. Three dogs are eating them. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Their crunches sound like Hadi's crunches. These dogs like apples. Harry and Oliver, not so much. 
Our teacher gathers us around her. She talks to the class. Then she looks at me in a kind way. One, she says. She touches an apple, then picks it. One, she says again. I am to take only one, as the other students have done. I nod. I want to say I understand. It's not that I am stupid. It's just that I am lost in this new place, but I don't know how to tell her. Can you imagine being somewhere and not being able to communicate what you're feeling and what you're thinking? That's got to be very difficult, very difficult indeed. I pull away from the rest. Beside me is a tree, shorter than the others, that does not seem to belong. It's a small, it is small and alone, like me. A few hard green apples hang from its branches. I twist one off. It fits perfectly in my hand. We hold our apples and run and slide down a hill. The dogs race ahead. Their ears blow backward, inside out, pink and shiny. At the bottom of the hill is a little crooked house made of wood. I wonder if a cow lives in it or a goat. Perhaps it's the home of a shepherd. And so Farah is investigating her new place here and finding new things to, to do. In the house is a wooden machine with a metal handle. I see no goat or cow or shepherd. The house is here for some other reason. Our teacher lines us up. One by one, we plop our apples into the machine. I will be the last to drop my small green one. My teacher seems about to speak. Then she shrugs and smiles. A boy shouts, hey, he moves toward me as if to stop me from putting in my little green apple, but he is too late. It has already gone. Now think about that apple. Remember the apple that Farah is putting into the machine. There are blades inside the machine that chop the apples. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. The students begin to push the handle that presses the chopped up apples. The skin and the pulp stay in the bag while the juice flows through. I hang back, not sure if I should be with the others. Pushing the handle must be hard. They lean against it and grunt. I am strong. I can help. I take a step toward them. So far is a bit uncertain, but she doesn't let that fear stop her. She pushes ahead, knowing that she can help and she's willing to. Anna calls and waves me to come beside her. A boy makes a place for me on the handle between them. I am pleased. We push and push. It is hard, but we're working together and we can do it. The juice drips down. Drip, drip, drip. Our teacher has brought paper cups. We line up again, fill them and drink. We lick our lips. I think I taste my special apple. Apple cider, Anna says. That must be what we are drinking. I say the word inside myself where it can't be heard. Apple. The other word is too difficult. Our teacher is speaking. She is holding out a bag for our cups and making signs that we must get ready to leave. Now, you remember that little green apple that Farah was going to put in that machine? The boy said, hey, because it wasn't red and ripe like the other ones. It looked different than the other apples that they were putting into that machine. And they thought because it was different that it was not going to be good for the apple cider that was going to come out. But we see that even though that apple didn't look like the other ones and was different from all the other apples that went in, 
the end result was wonderful. And the kids still were able to have a good time and enjoy the apple cider that they made. We're going to talk about that again in a minute. Anna sits next to me in the wagon as we ride back. There is a boy on my other side, Jim. He says and points at himself. I nod, Jim, I say silently. Hay tickles my arms and makes Anna sneeze. It smells of dry sunshine. So it looks like because of the kindness of a couple of these kids, Farah is starting to fit in a little bit more and feeling a little bit more comfortable, don't you think? I think it's wonderful. Jim pats his stomach and a belch jumps from his throat. Everyone laughs. I do too. Laughs sound the same as at home, just the same. So do sneezes and belches and lots of things. It's the words that are strange. But soon I will know the words. I will blend with the others the way my apple blended with the cider. I take a deep breath. Apple, I say, Anna claps. I smile and smile and smile. And so, boys and girls, there's a huge lesson to be learned in this story. And the lesson is this. You know, there's so many things that look differently about us. Some of us are taller, some of us are shorter, some of us are bigger, some of us are smaller. Some of us speak one language, some of us speak a different language. Some of us come from one place, some come from another. But it all makes us together this wonderful family of God. And even though there may be differences that we see, differences that we hear, differences in what we even believe, there are so many things that are the same. Laughter, a smile, listening to a dog chomp an apple, wanting to belong and feel a part of where we are, not feeling scared or apprehensive or nervous, wanting to fit in and have friends and feel welcome and at home. You see, all of these things are so important, but yet we can make people feel so not at home. We can have ideas and we can put in barriers that keep us from one another, that prevent us from encountering the person inside, the person God made, which goes beyond what we look like, whether we're male or female, what we call ourselves or what language we speak. Inside, we all have a soul. Inside, we are unique in the mind and heart of God. He made us into the special person we are. So regardless of all of those things that are different, those things that can separate us, those things that we sometimes ridicule in others, we are all still special, special in the eyes of God. And because we are, we need to treat each other with that same love and respect. So a lot in Farah's story today to talk about at home with mom and dad as you go about this week and with your brothers and sisters. And maybe you can come up with ways that you can make people feel more welcome and more special. Because I have a hunch, if we could do this as a world, a lot of our problems would become less insurmountable. So you have a great week. You have my love and my prayers. We'll talk to you soon. God bless.